pretty well all of us will end up swimming at some point of our paddling. Importantly, in current that has any strength in it whatsoever, you should never put your feet down on the bottom. If they get trapped, the force of the water will probably bend you over, could even snap your leg, but actually fold you onto the river bed. The forces are enormous. In the defensive swim position, our feet are out in front of us and we can use them to fend off of rocks to push ourselves to one side or the other, but we don't let them go down. The swimmer is making a real effort to keep the feet on the surface, now angling the body slightly and using the arms to push backwards in effectively a reverse ferry to get on line for the next bit. Getting feet up, bum up in fact as well, through the little stopper, onto the front and then swimming and even a little rollover to finish. In this easy practice a number of elements can be seen, the swim into the eddy and then once on the eddy line a roll over side over side which sort of crabs you into the eddy. Our swimmer here is taking up a defensive position, feet first, keep them on the surface so they can't be entrapped. At this point the swimmer is rolled over onto their stomach and it's now going head first, in fact going across the stream. And this aggressive technique is really good for either avoiding something below you, you really don't want to be into, like a tree, or in this case, making for an eddy. And this is a very good example of the same thing. A defensive swim through the upper part of the rapid, and now onto the stomach and look at the speed as he goes for the eddy. And right in at the top, gets him across the eddy line, into the eddy, and he's provided his own safety in reality. We have aggressive swimming, we have defensive swimming, and here the final part of the equation, a tuck. Because he's going, going over that drop, you don't want your legs out straight, because you'll go to the bottom like an arrow. If there's anything down there, loose blocks with gaps under them, you could easily get your feet trapped. So just dropping over there, tuck, through the drop, and then open up again to defensive, and finally, some really good aggressive swimming to get into the eddy. both with North American bags and very often with the HF bags from, from Germany then they will come with a handle here and the very first thing that I do as a Brit is to remove the handle so I've got a clean piece of rope. I don't want a handle here, it's something that can catch if I let go of the rope and it's being dragged down the river. I've seen handles catching between rocks and we talk about a clean rope principle. So we have to have something that clutches the rope at this end, which is the bag to carry it, the most convenient thing we can have. But the far end, the end that you generally hold on the bank, we want to be clean. If you carry a throw bag, then you should carry a knife. Normally, I carry a small folding knife in my pocket. Comes open very easily. I like the serrated blades. I, I just find it easier to cut. It's blunt at its tip. That lives in my pocket. I can and have on occasions, and you'll see raft guides in particular doing this, they will have a knife that fits onto the outside of their buoyancy aid. And all these things need to be at hand because if a rope becomes tangled into rocks, but there's someone at the other end of it in the water who can't let go, you're going to need to cut the rope and quick. It's not rope! 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 Yep. Go on, run. Rope! Rope! So where do we aim? Well, just aim at the person. They're moving, your brain will compute it. We've, we're descendants of hundreds of thousands of years of hunter-gatherers. It just works. And before I throw, I will always have a target landing spot, a target eddy. The rescuer 
picked a spot to make the throw easy, held it up to signal the intent, but in the moment his thrown has stepped off of that rock and moved downstream in this shallow gravel area. That has swung the swimmer into the eddy. This throw and move method works extremely well when the bank is clean. Here the swimmer is upstream of the canoe, a safe place, but if they are heading into danger they should swim clear. Now the thrower is dealing with the swimmer, their paddle and the canoe. By moving quickly down the bank trying to keep pace with the swimmer the rescuer can either pull in or in this case is actually moving further inland to begin to pull the boat into the side. Two other rescuers are moving quickly to assist. There's been very little strain or on the rescuer or the swimmer. The canoe and the swimmer now are safely at the bank. Even though we train ourselves and others to shout before throwing, it's the signal there that really tells the person in the water. Their ears are getting buffeted by the water, they're not going to hear a lot. The visual signal is important. Having got the rope, you must not in any circumstance wrap it around your hand. Be easy for it to lock and you not be able to release it. The rope could be the thing that holds you underwater. You will then need to let go. And if you have the time, then you can tuck the rope under the outside shoulder. This will put your body at an angle to the current, into a reverse ferry position in fact, and it will push you to the bank more quickly. Here we're going to use a, a vector to change the direction of the pull, and that's here with the red tape. There's... The rescuer should at this point be stepping down into the shallow water onto the gravel, but they're a bit mesmerised by the swimmer. But the backer-upper in blue is got there and is actually forcing the move and making sure they don't get pulled on. The swimmer has been held by the yellow rope. The red tape and its carabiner actually change that direction and allows the swimmer to be swung in more easily. Right. On the bank, the thrower will tend to break the rope with his hand grip. You see the rope actually goes through two right angles and that allows us to put a lot of braking force onto the rope. I can lean back into the rope, but if it becomes too much and starts pulling me upright and forward, then I need to release. I let it run cleanly through my hands, I don't try to slow it, and then as the person bobs back up, I will actually then reapply the, the two right angles and start holding again. Here the people holding the rope are at the top of a steep bank. So the rope now is passed under the one arm pit, round the back and across the opposing shoulder and the person is held in place by the second person. And a nicely placed throw, nicely measured and swing the person into that small eddy, all measured out in advance. Same scenario, but this time we've got a vector, throw bag, the yellow rope, that will pull the person quickly into the eddy. Note that the yellow rope is only attached via carabiner and it's there to slide. There is no knot. An alternative hold, rather than go under and over the shoulders, is just to go straight around the waist and be held. Again, the person being held in place by a second. You're not always going to have back up a second person when you do a throw, in which case you're going to have to manage that force yourself. Having a long piece of rope behind you so that you can feed it out, let it through the catch and release process to gradually swing the person to the side, or by taking a turn around the waist and sitting down really quickly but there will be plenty of times when you will be the only one holding. Repacking the throw bag, we need to do this very systematically. Uh, there are various tricks, but basically we're just going to push the rope in bit by bit. 
every now and again I'll press it into the bottom of the bag. Now that's quite awkward. So what I can do is run it over shoulder. It's easier if it crosses behind me because then it stays on that shoulder and then I can just push the rope in like so. I can do that with a carabiner. And that, I must admit, I prefer if the rope is soaking wet. I don't want the carabiner left on my buoyancy aid because if I'm heading off down the river, if I take a swim, that's really an entrapment point. Thinking about it. And now I can just do the clip up. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please comment or press the like button and of course you can subscribe. My own book, Canoeing, is available directly from myself or from Amazon and other retailers. You can support the channel, if you'd like, by going to buymeacoffee.com. The link is also in the description below this video. Thank you very much indeed.